Good evening, Proselkomai. God bless you. May the Lord keep you and favor you all the days of your life. That was such a formal introduction. Or salutation, whatever you want to call it. Um, happy Friday. Ooh, it's one more week we have been able to do by God's grace and mercy. So tonight we want to do our seventh night of obedience seven god's perfect number ooh, ooh, ooh. yes anyway i know i'm being silly but i want to talk about obedience in the raw you know how they have the sugar in the raw like ooh, why is it raw because it's not been bleached you know so who do i want to talk about being in the raw we're going to talk about Isaiah. We're going to talk about Hosea. Isaiah, Hosea. They're both being in the raw. So let's just go over a couple of fun facts about Isaiah. Isaiah had a very long ministry. He reigned, or he reigned, he wasn't king, but his ministry lasted from 740 to 685 BC. Um... His wife was known as a prophetess. So there you go, ladies. We were being useful even then. Mm. He was educated. He was also a historian. And in the actual courts, the royal courts. So he had access to the kings quite frequently. He was even related to one of them. He was of the tribe of Judah. And there was a debate regarding his writings. It started kind of in like the 1800s, saying that because a lot of his writings were predictive as opposed to concurrent, meaning dealing with what was happening at the time, they kind of questioned whether or not he wrote all of Isaiah. However, we as believers believe in the revelation through the Holy Spirit. I can't prove that he did or he didn't because I wasn't alive back then. I would not look as pretty. But <laughs> um, I will leave that to God's hands because even though I can't prove it, I can't disprove it either. And I still think the word is sufficient enough to edify us, to exhort us, and to convict us of what we as believers need to uphold and learn. So some of the stuff that um, I wanted to present also is that a lot of the apostles in the New Testament used um, the book of Isaiah, including Jesus. He said, the spirit of the Lord is upon me, which is something that is quoted directly out of the book of Isaiah. So something interesting, not sure if you knew, but I want to bring something to your attention. And it's in the chat it's in chapter 20 of Isaiah. It's chapter 20 and verse 2. I'm gonna read it to you. And this is why we're calling it obedience in the raw. Pay attention. Did we pray? I don't remember us praying. Let's pray. Father God, we just thank you for this evening because we have made it through seven days, Jesus. Seven days, God. We thank you for the privilege and the blessing of being together and being able to live out your word according to your understanding and according to your guiding and according to your leading of us through this whole process. So Father, we thank you for these seven days. And we give them to you, God, asking that you help us to live out our obedience for your glory. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay. It says, The Lord told Isaiah, son of Amos, Take off your burlap you have been wearing and remove your sandals. Isaiah did as he was told and walked around naked and barefoot. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> Excuse me. Naked and barefoot. 
I don't know if I had the courage to do that. Then the Lord said, My servant Isaiah has been walking around naked and barefoot for the last three years. Not one day. Three years. You know, I'm going to calculate that just because I need to know. 365 times 3. 1095. 10, 1095 days. Naked. No. I'm glad it was Isaiah. Because I think I would have had a problem. And the reason he did this is because God was sending a warning to Egypt and Ethiopia. Saying, hey, you guys have not been too cool lately. And I'm not really satisfied with the way you have been misleading and misguiding my people. I'm going to send the king of Assyria over to yank you up. And this is how you're going to be. He was warning them. He was, God was real. He said, look, I'm just giving you a foretaste. This is what you're going to look like in a couple years. Because I'm coming for you. God is real. I'm just saying. He is real. So, by bringing that out, I just want to bring some things to your attention. You know, sometimes God has to bring us the naked truth of our behavior. And you may not want to hear it. I know this because a lot of times God tells me, and I'm like, no, God, that's not me. And he's like, Mama, stop trying to play me. I'm God. I know better. You're not going to convince me that that wasn't you. You're not going to convince me that that wasn't your intention. You're not going to convince me that you planned to be obedient two years down the line. Because what have we said? Prolonged obedience is still disobedience. So if God is saying, hey, let's do this now. Example, God has been, maybe God is telling you fast. And you're like, you know, I don't know if I can do that. I don't know if I can fast, Lord. And God is like, um, I'm telling you to fast because I know you can do it. And God will not give us a cross that we cannot bear, right? So if God is telling us fast, and we don't fast for like three months. It's disobedience. Yeah, you were obedient on that day. But he told you three months ago. Perfect example with me. I am just now being obedient. And I had to repent. Because I sincerely don't have a very loving relationship with the camera. I don't like the camera. The camera makes me uncomfortable. And he's been telling me for a very long time, do these videos. And I'm like, I don't want to, God. And he, and I have to say, while I am ashamed to admit it for years now, for about a good three years, I have been evading videos focusing on me I just don't like it I feel I feel this is what I feel I feel like ah but anyway so now that I am obeying I feel a different kind of freedom that I didn't feel before I'm sure when you obey you're gonna feel a different kind of freedom you didn't feel before Meaning, if God is telling you to fast, do it. If you're not used to fasting, start with six hours. Start at six in the morning till 12 noon. Or you can do eight in the morning till two o'clock. The goal is that you start somewhere. And these seven days for me have been the beginning for me. Because I've, I've told God, God, I want to be obedient and I want to serve you in all that you do. And the first thing he told me was, um, Tita. I'm like, yes, Lord. You want to be obedient? Yes, God, I want to be obedient. Use me, Lord. He's like, you sure? I'm like, yes, Lord, use me. He's like, Tita. I'm like, yes, God. 
You sure you want to be obedient? I'm like, yes. Do the videos. <sighs> okay, Lord. I'll do the videos. So here I am. I'm doing the videos. I'm being obedient. After like three years. But here I am. I'm not going back. I'm moving ahead. So with that, what am I bringing this up to you for? Because in that moment, Isaiah could have said, No, Lord, I don't feel like being naked running around in front of town. Because you, you, you know there's this, a law against this. It's indecent. I can get stoned. But he, you notice if you read in chapter 20, he did not offer that type of argument. He did not say, no, it's not going to happen, Lord. I just don't see why I would do that. He did it. He just took it off and kept it going. And I was like, oh, Lord, I don't know if I could handle that. So here's another prophet. His name is Hosea. And you're like, oh boy, here we go. The drama. So Hosea was a prophet. And God told him to marry a prostitute. And he told him to marry a prostitute because he wanted to demonstrate to Israel this is what you guys are doing to me. I am Hosea and you are the prostitute. First off, right there and then, I was like, what? I'm the prostitute. Why? And as I began to read the story, I was like, Lord. But I can't act like I ain't never did that. Granted. I didn't do what she was doing. But I can tell you that I have sold myself short because I wasn't obedient. I have left God to go serve my flesh. That wasn't obedient. I have decided to completely ignore what God has been telling me. To serve my own selfish need. That wasn't obedient either. So. This prostitute. Her name was Gomer. G-O-M-E-R. Weird name. So God told him to marry her. He marries her. And she bears him a son. And. And this is another thing. God uses. Hosea's children as messages to the people because the first one the first son they named him Jezreel and this is why they named him Jezreel for I'm about to punish the king of uh, the king Jehu to avenge the murders he committed at Jezreel so Jezreel was a place in Judah and God was like, yeah, 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 I'm not happy with what you just did to those people. The prophet's going to have a son named after this place. And it's going to be my representation of how I'm going to get even with you for your injustice. Remember, God's just. Then, they had a daughter. And they named her Lo Rahama, which meant not loved. Why are you doing this to these children, Lord? You are traumatizing them. And the reason they named the child not loved is, for I will no longer show love to the people of Israel or forgive them, but I will show love to the people of Judah. I will free them from their enemies. Not with weapons and armies or horses and chariots, but my power as Lord, their God. You know, thank God for the grace. Because that's really harsh right there. 
He says to them that I, you are not loved. No. I'm going to show mercy and grace to Judah, but not to Israel. Because Israel is being hard-headed. Y'all being knuckleheads. But Judah, I love them because they love me. And they're doing what I asked them to do. And then, Loami, which means, not my people. Now, that's a little self-explanatory, because God was saying, y'all not my people. We ain't cool. Mm -mm. Don't call me. I'm not coming. In Spanish, <laughs> we have a saying that goes, no te vista, porque no vas. Which means, don't get dressed, because you ain't going nowhere. And that's basically what God is telling them. He's like, yeah, ain't my people. We ain't going nowhere. I'm not saving you. I'm not coming to your rescue. I'm not going to bless you. I'm not going to. Thank God he doesn't do that to us. Because this is some raw. I can't imagine. This is some raw situations. Some raw tellings some raw dealings some raw confrontations that god is bringing to them and he's just like bow in your face i'm not gonna repent because i've warned you how many times and i sit and i think about this and i get i get i get ashamed to be quite frank, I get ashamed, I get uncomfortable, and I start to scream in my chair because I'm like, Lord, how many times have I been Israel? How many times have I walked off on my own path saying, God, I'm going to do it my way because I don't want to wait for you? Sound familiar? And if it hadn't been for the blood of Jesus Christ, I would not... I'd be in their predicament. I'd be in the raw situation. No protection. No acknowledgement. I'm not his people. I am not loved. And I would be named Jezreel because what he's going to do to what the, I did to him, he's going to return it back to me. And I'm so glad that God doesn't treat me for what I deserve. But he loves me through his son, Jesus Christ. He loves you like he loves his son. So, what does that mean for us? You and me. We often stray in our walk. Admit it. We often stray. Even five minutes, we stray. God's like, do this. And you're like, do, 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 do. God says, do this. And you're like, okay. Take like five steps and then veer off to the left. You digress. We seek out our own answers. I know I am horrible for that. I'm so horrible for that. Because in my little twisted human mind, I think like, okay, God, I'm doing you a solid. Because I'm not coming to you now. But when I really need your help, you're going to be there for me. Because I haven't really bothered you with the little stuff. And that could be the most, that is the most wrong philosophy to have. Don't do it. Don't do it. Don't think that you can cause God to move when you want him to move. Don't think that you can find your own answers. Excuse me. Because God is taking too long. Because when you find your own answers... You end up in trouble, you end up hurt, you end up destroyed, you end up completely naked. Sometimes we want to MacGyver our own little solution. Y'all know what MacGyver means. It means you try to create it yourself without asking for his guidance or understanding on how to handle it. And most of the time, while it worked for MacGyver and the TV show, it doesn't work for us. We prefer the phone instead of the throne. 
I know that's really dramatic, but I just had to put it there for you. This is not prayer. This is not prayer. This is prayer. This is communication. And it's not prayer unless they pray for you. And it's still not you praying. It's them praying for you. This is not prayer. This is prayer. And finding a way to express yourself to God when you're going through these situations or any situation is what he wants us to do. Even for the little things. That has been a major revamp in my brain, let me tell you. So, why am I getting on you about this? Why am I telling you, oh my God, obedience in the raw, walking around naked because we were disobedient and being named all these funky names because we have been disobedient. Because in the New Testament, Christ gave us a commandment. It's called the Great Commission. And it says, go ye out into all the world and preach the gospel. That is our commission. That is our purpose. That is the reason why we meet. It's the reason why we pray. It's the reason why we function. It's the reason why he died on the cross. So that every man, woman, and child can know the salvation of the Lord and receive it. But... If we're out doing our own thing, we're not producing for the kingdom. And so I want to encourage you after these seven days that you would sit down and take inventory of what it is that you feel God is calling you to. And begin to work these things out. Because he gave it to you. He does not take it back. You are still responsible for it. And at the last day when you meet him face to face in the throne room. Like Isaiah did in chapter 6. He's going to bring out all this stuff. And I don't know about you. But I do not want to be held accountable for the blood of people that were lost. Because I didn't do what he asked me to do. So I want to invite you today, tonight, submit your plans to God. All of them, even the lady bitty ones. Submit them to him. Give him your plate. Give him your paper. Give him your diary. Give him your planner. Give him your journal. Give him you. And you watch how he's going to continue to bless you and give you the desires of your heart. But it comes in time. We have to learn to give it all for him. I want to leave you with this verse. It is in 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verses 3 through 5. And it says this. I came in... I came in to you in I came to you in weakness, timid and trembling, and my message, my preaching were plain. Rather than using clever and persuasive speeches, I relied on the power of the Holy Spirit. I did not I did this so that you would trust not in human wisdom, but in the power of God. That's Paul speaking to the Corinthians about how he came as a missionary. To bring them the gospel. So I didn't come to you with eloquent words. With fancy words. One of the reasons why I like to be me. I'm not into the whole putting on makeup just to be on a camera. I'm not, I'm, I'm not even into putting on jewelry. I'm just not into that stuff. But I am into what God says about me. I am into how God views me. And when I'm covered in the blood of Jesus, I find favor in his sight. And I want to encourage you tonight that as Paul spoke to these people out of the power of God, I pray that God's spirit 
would touch you in this very instant so that you can receive the word of God for you. You can receive the word of God in your belly. You can receive the word of God in your heart, in your mind, because he called you to do special and maravilloso, which means marvelous things for his kingdom. And you cannot give up. I cannot give up because the tough road is coming against us. We cannot shake it off. We must fight to the very end. And when we get to the end, Christ is going to say, well done, thy good and faithful servant. Enter into the joy of your Lord. And I want to be there, even if it's the only thing that I do is enter into the joy of the Lord. I want to be there. I want to see his face. I want to see all the people who have been touched by my life because I was obedient. I don't want to be like that servant who had the one talent. And he said, oh my God, I was afraid that I was going to lose it. And I buried it. I do not want to be that one person that buries my talent. I do not want the blood of others on my hands. I want them to be clean so that I can lift them to the holy mountain of God in worship and in praise. But I want you to know tonight you are expected to do the very same thing. To bow down in worship and give it all. So that he can use you, so that he can give you the strength, so that you can walk in the same boldness, in the same authority, with the same power. Calling those things that are not as though they were. Binding up the enemy when he gets out of hand in the name of Jesus. But he's asking you to give your heart in obedience. Give your will in obedience. Give your mind in obedience. Are you willing to give God that? Your heart, your mind, your spirit. There's this thing called the Shema. And I'm always harping about it. Because it's an amazing verse. It is one of the most amazing verses. And it says, love the Lord your God with all your strength. With all your heart. With all your mind. And with all your soul. Love Him. Because when you love somebody, you obey. Jesus said, greater, has, greater love has no man than he laid down his life for the other. Christ has shown you how much he loves you. Because he laid down his life so that you can receive salvation. And then you can turn around and do the same for others. Ladies. I'm going to share one last verse. And it's found in Isaiah chapter 6. And it's just one verse. Chapter 6 verse 8. It says, Then I heard the Lord asking, Whom should I send as a messenger to the people? Who will go for us? God speaking amongst themselves. Holy Spirit, Jesus on the other side. He said, who's going to go? And Isaiah, as we say in Spanish, como presentado, you know, like a nosy body, busy body. He's like, I'll go. Here am I, send me. Tonight I invite you. Are you willing to say, here am I, send me? If you are, pray with me these words. Father God, I ask that you help me to surrender my complete self to you. That I give my strength, my heart, my mind, and my soul to you. In holy worship, help me to be obedient to you. Help me to understand your love for me and those around me. Lord, I repent of everything that I've done that has caused you to be grieved. Save me, heal me, refresh me, make me new. God, forgive me for my disobedience. I'm not doing as you asked. In Jesus' name, amen, ladies. Tuesday night prayer. I hope you have a wonderful evening. God bless.